Hi and welcome to another story and today we have part 13 of Cookie by Jacqueline Wilson continuing from chapter 18. No one called me ugly at Sea Haven Primary, not even Toby. At first they called me the new girl which was a perfectly acceptable description but after a little while they called me the cookie girl. I started off just sharing cookies with my best friend and fellow uncle princess but soon I started taking a little bag of cookies each day and handing them around to anyone who seemed left out or lonely. Then the whole school got involved in raising money for some poor children in Africa. We were told to bring in cakes and biscuits to sell to each other at lunchtime. Right, said Mum, rolling up her sleeves. She started making an enormous batch of bunny cookies, all different flavours, every one lovingly iced with raisins for eyes and a dab of glacy cherry for a mouth. Nearly everyone brought cakes and biscuits, but mine were the most popular. I sold them for ten pence per cookie and they sold out in five minutes flat. We had a summer fair for school funds at the end of June and Mr Pettit actually wrote to Mum begging her to run her own cookie store. She made us both little lacy white aprons out of a net curtain. She got me to paint a sign for the store. What shall I put? I don't know. Dilly's cookies. That sounds too much like those cookies you can buy. Millie's cookies. People will think you're copying. How about bunny cookies? Then I can draw little white rabbits scampering around and round at the edges of the sign. OK then, bunny cookies it is, said Mum. She made cookies all afternoon, all evening and half the night. I made cookies too, mixing and rolling and cutting alongside Mum. Mike helped too, finding endless tins to store them. He came with us on Saturday to help Mum set up the stall. Princess was helping her Mum on the Tombola stall. Her sisters and brother were there too, Julep, Precious and little baby Marley. We're going to have to enrol your entire family in our uncle's club, I said. What's your Mum called, Princess? She's called Petal, so she's in too. What about your Mum? Everyone calls her Dilly. That's kind of unusual, isn't it? Princess was looking at Mike, who was arranging hundreds of cookies on plates. He absent-mindedly nibbled the ears off one of the bunnies and Mum pretended to smack his hand. What about your dad? I thought you said your Mum and Dad had split up, said Princess. He's not my dad, I said. Well, I did think that was a bit odd. I did think he was a bit old, said Princess. Is he your granddad? No, no, he's just Mike. He's lovely. We live with him, I said. Princess nodded, eyebrows raised. So... He and your mum are like a couple? No! Princess stared at Mum and Mike. They were still fooling around, pairing up the rabbits on the plates so that they were giving each other Eskimo kisses. They look like a couple, she said. Well, they're not, I said, but I started to wonder about it. Dad had thought Mum had a thing going with Mike, but then Dad was so crazy he thought every guy in the world was after Mum. He was still leaving angry messages on her phone, demanding to know what was going on. He kept asking when, she was, when we were coming back. He actually said it was lonely at home without us, which made Mum cry. But Auntie Avril rang to see how we were getting on, and she told us she'd called round at Dad's, and she said he seemed quite chirpy. We had a glass of wine or two, and a nice little chat. It was almost like old times, said Auntie Avril. You don't mind, do you, Dilly? I don't mind a bit, Avril, said Mum. Why should I? Well, dear, he is still your husband. Yes, but I'm not with him now, am I? You do what you want, Avril. Go for it, girl. Maybe Mum and Dad would get a divorce now and then Mum would be free to marry Mike if she wanted. I wanted it more than anything. I knew Mike would be the most magical stepdad in the whole world. Mum's cookie store made a positive fortune for the whole school. Mike made his special fish pie for supper and we opened a bottle of champagne to celebrate. Mum let me have half a glass. It was lovely, though the bubbles went right up my nose and tickled. Mum had much more than half a glass and went to bed quite giggly. You are funny when you're drunk, Mum, I said, giving her a hug. I'm not drunk. I've only had two glasses of champagne, silly, said Mum. Well, maybe it was three. Anyway, I'm just happy, OK? Are you really happy, Mum? Yes. Well, sometimes I still wonder if I'm crazy, if we've done the right thing. I worry about what's right for you. I think we've done exactly the right thing. Well, we've certainly been so lucky. Coming here, finding Mike. Yes, Mike. I do like Mike, Mum. Yes, so do I. He's been so kind and he's such fun to be with. And he never, ever seems to get cross, said Mum. He likes you too, ever so. So what would you do if if he wanted to to be your boyfriend? Goodness, well, well Mike's lovely, I know, and I'm, I'm very fond of him, but I know he's quite old, Mum, but that doesn't really matter, does it? No, no, I mean, I fell for your dad, didn't I? And Mike isn't terribly good looking, though I like the way he looks. I like the way he looks too. So do you think you'll get together, Mum? I don't think so, Beauty, Mum said gently. It's not because he hasn't got much money, is it? I whispered. Oh, Beauty. Mum sounded shocked, as if that matters. I like it that Mike isn't rich and doesn't have a hoot, give a hoot about money. 
He's become a very special friend. If you must know, he did sort of hint that he'd love to be more than just good friends, but he was very understanding when I explained why I wanted things to stay just the way they are. But why, Mum? I asked, exasperated. Because I want to be on my own for a bit. No man in my life. Independent. I got together with your dad when I was fresh out of school. I've never learned how to stand on my own two feet. I want to prove I can cope. It's still a bit scary, but it's exciting making decisions for myself. I always thought I was absolutely thick, but now I seem to be doing okay. Do you understand, darling? Well, sort of, I said, but I hope you might change your mind later on. I know one thing, said Mum. I'm not really on my own. I've got you, babes. I couldn't manage without you. We're a team, you and me, beauty. Mum and I were a real team when it came to cookie baking. Suddenly, our bunny cookies were absolutely in demand. We spent Saturdays and Sundays up to our elbows in cookie dough in an attempt to please all our customers. Mum had been supplying cookies for all the guest houses on Primrose Terrace for weeks, but now the Big White Hotel wanted their own batch to offer to guests for afternoon tea, and Peggy's Parlour wanted a big jar of assorted ice cookies every single day. We'd had inquiries from several Seahaven, Seahaven hotels and tea shops, and we were, we were asked to provide a hundred bags of bunny cookies for the big Seahaven Carnival in July. I designed a special bunny label to stick on each bag, a white rabbit on a bright green background. Mum and I set up a big cookie stall at the carnival and dressed up in our white lacy aprons. The local television news came and filmed us. I didn't even know they were doing it. I was just busy selling cookies and then this guy jumped in front of me and told me to eat a bunny cookie and go yum yum. So I did. And then I saw the camera pointing in my direction. I just about died, but it was all over before I could object. My heart started thudding like crazy in case I looked stupid when Mum and Mike and I switched on the local news that evening. But to my great relief, I was only on for two seconds. They said I made the cookies all by myself, which made me fuss, but Mum just laughed. The next morning, Mike came charging into the kitchen, eyes popping. There's a phone call for our little television star. It's Watchbox, that kid's programme on Saturday mornings. They want to have you on their show, he said. What? Uh, oh, Mike, you are a tease, I said, shaking my head at him. Stop kidding, Mike. You're very bad, said Mum. I am not kidding. Come to the phone, beauty. Dilly, they need to talk to you too. I promise I'm not joking. I went to the phone, Mum following me. Hello, it's Beauty speaking, I said uncertainly, still not quite believing Mike. Hello, Beauty. Uh, my name's Jules Latimer. I'm a researcher on Watchbox. Do you know our show? I've been watching various news items and I saw your little spot on the piece about the Sea Haven Carnival. So, you make all those wonderful cookies? Well, my mum makes most of them. I just help out when we're really busy, I said. And did you design the bunny logo? The logo? Oh, on the picture of the bags. Yes, yes, I did that. Well, We'd love to have you on our programme. You could maybe show our presenters, Simon and Miranda, how you make the cookies. Would you like to do that? Would I like to go on television? Oh, goodness, it might be so scary. I'd have thousands and thousands of children watching me. Ugly beauty, they'd all laugh and snigger at their television sets, saying horrible things about me. No, no thank you very much, I said. What? said Mum beside me. Don't be daft, beauty. Of course you want to go on Watchbox. She snatched the phone away from me. Hello? I'm Dillis Cookson, Beauty's mum. I think she's a little bit overwhelmed. I'm sure she'd love to go on Watchbox. It's her second favourite television programme. I heard the researcher laughing and asking something. Oh, her favourite has to be Rabbit Hutch. She's absolutely nuts on Sam and Lily, said mum. Shut up, mum. They'll think I'm a terrible baby, I hissed. Mum wouldn't shut up. That's why she painted that lovely white rabbit for our bunny cookies. It's because she loves Lily, she said. She listened to the researcher for a while and then laughed. Yes. Yes, okay. What day do you record the programme? Tomorrow. No, Mum. I'm not going to, I said, struggling to get the phone off her. But she held it out of my reach. Can you, give me, can you give me the full address? That's London, right? I'm afraid I don't know London very well. Will I be able to park at the studio, or should we get the train? You'll send a special car for us. What, all the way to Rabbit Cove? Oh, wonderful. It's Lily Cottage, 19 Primrose Terrace, at nine o'clock. We'll be ready and waiting. Mum rang off and then gave me a huge hug. I stayed stony still, not responding. You can be ready and waiting. I'm not going, I said. Oh, beauty, don't be so silly. I don't want to look silly on television. But you won't. You were fine on the local news, completely natural. Yes, because I didn't know what they were doing. But I'm not going on Watchbox. I hate it. You'll love it, especially when you know what they've got lined up for you. I'd give anything to tell you, but they want it to be a total surprise, said Mum. I know what they want me to do. Show Simon and Miranda how to make cookies. Simon is the big fat jolly guy who shouts all the time. 
And Miranda is little and very bouncy and beautiful. I couldn't possibly make cookies with them. I'm not going on Watchbox, Mum, no matter what you say. But, look, you're getting just like Dad, I said, starting to shout. He was always, always, always making me do stuff I didn't want to do. Please don't you start, Mum. I'm sorry, but I'm not the sort of pretty show-off girl who'd be great on television. I'd be awful. You don't understand me one little bit, do you? You're a totally useless mum. Mum stared at me, her eyes filled with tears, and she rushed upstairs. I glared after her. I was still glaring when Mike found me, kicking the skirting board in the living room. Are you looking for those rats again, he said. Steady on, you'll scuff the paintwork, and it won't exactly enhance your new baseball boots either. I'm sorry, I said, feeling bad. That's okay, kiddo. Fancy saying sorry to your mum, too. I think you were shouting at her, and when I listened on the stairs just now, it sounded as if she might be crying, said Mike. Well, it's not my fault, I said, just because I don't want to go on Watchbox. What is this programme, anyway? I've heard of it, but I don't think I've ever watched it. Oh, they have these two presenters on every day, and all these kids come on and do stuff. Dance and sing and play around. All the girls at my old school were desperate to be on Watchbox. Sky, especially. Is she the one who was particularly mean to you there? Well, don't you want to be on the wretched programme just to be to get one up on her? Yes, but I'd make such a total fool of myself. Everyone would laugh. What makes you think that? I just can't do stuff in front of people. They'd say my silly name and every child watching would give a double take and go, Beauty? As if. Like they did at Sea Haven Primary, said Mike, with a little edge to his voice. You were so certain they were all going to laugh at you and tease you and make your life a misery, remember? And did that happen? He waited. I fidgeted. He cupped his ear, wanting a response. All right. They're all lovely at my new school, I said. Well, except for Toby and Ben. And actually, they gave me some of their perfectly disgusting homemade toffee that sticks your teeth together the other day, hoping I'd give them bunny cookies in exchange. So you were wrong about Sea Haven School and its pupils, Mike persisted. Yes, OK, I've admitted that. So, don't you think you might just be wrong about this television show? You could go on it and actually be a little superstar. No, I wouldn't. Yes, you would. But even if you came over all shy and can't say a word, does it really matter? At least you'll have had a go, and you'll have given your mum's cookies an enormous plug too. Do you know how much it costs to have an advert on television? Beauty, thousands and thousands and thousands of pounds. Yet you can advertise bunny cookies for nothing on the most popular programme on kids' television. Don't you see what this could mean for you and Dilly? She could expand properly, take on some staff. There are heaps of mums in Rabbit Cove who'd love to do a bit of baking part-time. It's her chance to turn bunny cookies into a quality product, sold nationwide. Bunny cookies in every upmarket food emporium. Fortnum and Mason, Harrods, Selfridges. I stared at Mike open-mouthed. Do you really think that could happen? I asked. Well, I may be going a bit over the top to prove my point. I'm not sure Dilly would want to develop the business to such an extent. But she's taking it very seriously, Beauty. She's getting some confidence in herself at last. You could feel so proud of her. I am, I said. So you know how much this means to her. Though you mean, though you mean much more to her than her precious cookies. In a way, she's doing all this for you. And yet, what did I hear you shouting at her just now? I said she was a useless mum, I said, my voice going all wobbly. And do you really think that? No, of course I don't. I just said it because I was cross and wanted to hurt her. Because I truly still don't want to go on Watchbox. But I will if you really make me. I'm not going to make you do anything, sweetheart, said Mike, putting his arm around me. But I'm hoping, like any anything, you'll see say you will. I'll be so proud of you, beauty. I gave him a big hug. You're very clever, you know. You don't shout and yell. <laughs> you don't even really tell me off. You just say stuff that makes me do exactly what you want. You must have been a great dad, Mike. I think I was a rather rubbish dad, actually. Not much cop as a husband, either. I just wanted to do my own thing and expected everyone else to fit in. I try not to think about the past too much. I'm not very proud of the way I behaved. Maybe I've learned my lesson now. That's the only thing I've learned about life. You don't have to go on making the same old mistakes over and over again. You can't change other people, but you can change yourself. There, wise old Mike <laughs> has done enough mumbling in his, in his beard. Scoot upstairs and make it up with your mum, Poppet. I ran up to the room. Mum was lying on the bed, sobbing into her pillow. Oh, mum, don't. I'm sorry, I said, lying down beside her. I'm sorry too, Beauty. I just got so excited I forgot you'd find it a terrible ordeal. It's okay, you don't have to go on the silly old programme. But I will, I said. I'll do it, Mum, for us. To advertise bunny cookies. I'll probably be absolute rubbish on the telly and you'll die of embarrassment, but I'll give it a go, okay? 
Oh, you darling, said Mum. You're the best daughter in the whole world. And you're the best Mum, I said. I was glad I'd changed my mind and made Mum happy and Mike proud. But in the middle of the night, wide awake, I wished, wished, wished I didn't have to. I kept imagining what it would be like. I'd be in a studio with a lot of cool, confident, talented, beautiful girls like Sky. They'd all dance and sing and I'd make a muck up of my cookies and they'd all goggle at me and chortle and children from John O'Groats to Land's End would, would goggle and chortle too. I didn't get to sleep for it until about five o'clock. Mum bounced out of bed very early. I huddled under the duvet while she got ready. She seemed to be making a big performance of it, swishing clothes around the rail, opening drawers, snapping her suitcase. She woke me up with a cup of tea at eight o'clock. Rise and shine, my little television star, she said, giving me a kiss. I sat up in bed, looking mum up and down. She looked lovely, wearing her cream dress, her hair newly washed and fluffy around her shoulders. I took a sip of tea and made my voice gruff. Your neck looks a bit bare, Dilly. Why don't you wear your diamond collar, I said. Oh, don't, said mum, and we both laughed shakily. Do you think I should tell your dad you're going to be on telly, said mum. No, because I know I'll muck it up, I said. I wish you were doing it. You look fabulous, mum, really. Do you really think so, babes? Mum glanced at her suitcase. I've got another outfit in case they all look dead casual. I don't want to let you down, darling. Now I've ironed your grey dress and your white pinafore and polished your grey boots. We don't want to get all creased in the car, so we'll pop them on a hanger and you can wear your comfy jeans and stuff for the journey, OK? I nodded, touched that she'd gone to so much trouble. I still wasn't sure I'd actually be able to stand there in front of the cameras. My tummy flipped over at the fort and I could barely swallow my tea. Mike insisted on doing breakfast by himself. He made mum and me sit down as if we were ordinary guests on holiday at Lily Cottage. All the other guests made a great fuss of me, and when the big black car drew up outside, they all crowded on the doorstep and patted me and kissed me and wished me luck. Mike gave me a big hug and whispered in my ear, Good luck, kiddo. He gave mum a hug too and whispered in her ear. She blushed and giggled. I wonder if they might just get together, in spite of what mum said. Then mum and I got into the back, back of the car. The chauffeur was a nice fat man called Harry, who hung my dress and pinafore on a special little hook inside the car and stowed mum's suitcase in the boot. Are you comfy now, ladies? You just sit back and relax, he said. I felt a horrible pang as we drove out of Rabbit Cove. I knew it was silly, but I was scared I'd somehow made it all up. And once we were back on the main road to London, it would vanish into the sea and never Neverland we'd never be able to reach again. I knelt up on the seat and peered back. It's OK, babe. We'll be back this evening, said Mum softly. Rabbit Cove's our home now. We're going to live there all summer and winter too. And the next summer and winter forever, I said. Yes, yes, if that's what we both want, said Mum. I turned around and cuddled up to her. You bet it is, I said. Harry let us choose CDs to play in his car and we sang along for a while, but then my head started nodding. When I woke up again, we were in London. Oh, help, I said, suddenly horribly scared. Oh, Harry, are we nearly there? Five minutes away. I don't want to go now, I said. It'll be fine, beauty, said Mum, holding my hand. But her hand was cold and clammy too. You'll love being on Watchbox, young lady, said Harry. That Simon is a right laugh. And as for Miranda, foie. <laughs> we drove into the studios. I couldn't, ki couldn't help feeling a little bit thrilled when Harry told the security man at the gate, here's Miss Beauty Cookson and her mum for Watchbox. We were let through straight away. Harry parked the car, handed over my grey outfit and the suitcase, and promised he'd, he'd be waiting to take us all the way home after the programme. Wish us luck, Harry, said Mum. Oh yes, I wish you lots of luck, but you won't need it. You'll be brilliant. Well, if Beauty makes a batch of bunny cookies, we'll make sure we'll bring you some, said Mum. We were met by Jules, the researcher. She was much younger than I'd imagined, with a ponytail and a very short skirt. I thought just at first she might be one of the child performers on the show. She took Mum and me to our very own dressing room. It even had our names on the door. Now, we'll probably have a little rehearsal and you'll meet Simon and Miranda and all the other kids in the show, she said. You're going to start the show. Beauty, making cookies. You'll be showing Simon and Miranda what to do. Then, while the cookies are baking, we have our own little oven. No expense spared on Watchbox. All our other guests will do their turns. We've got a singer, a conjurer and two different dancers. And then we'll finish with you, Beauty, taking the cookies out of the oven. We were wondering if you'd maybe draw a little rabbit for us, seeing as you designed the bunny cookies logo. Oh yes, that would be great, said Mum. Looking, Look, I've brought lots of Beauty's drawings. She's even done some oil paintings. She unfastened her suitcase. She didn't have spare clothes in there at all. She had all my Sam and Lily drawings and paintings. Oh Mum, I said, terribly embarrassed. They don't want to see all that silly old stuff. 
Oh, yes, we do, said Jules, seizing an armful. Do you mind if I take them away to, to show the producer? They'll fit in brilliantly with the special finale. What special finale, I asked. Oh, we've just thought of a good way of rounding off the programme, said Jules. She winked at Mum and Mum winked back. What's all the winking about, I asked Mum, when we were left on our own in the dressing room. What winking, said Mum. I just had something in my eye, that's all. I didn't have time to quiz her further, because we were called out into the studio for a run-through rehearsal. It was a great room full of cameras with cables snaking all over the floor. There were two big red squashy sofas in the corner, a mini kitchen in another, and a round stage with a spotlight. There were four other children standing around with their mums. They all looked comfortingly anxious too, apart from a beautiful girl with long fair hair and a very short skirt and sparkly top. She was wearing very high heels. She is so like Sky, I whispered to Mum. Maybe she'll trip on her heels and fall over. Show her knickers, Mum whispered back. The fair girl looked positively ordinary compared to Miranda. She was simply dressed in jeans and a little t-shirt and sneakers, but she looked stunning, her long, ultra-curly black hair flying everywhere, her honey-coloured skin shining, her dark eyes huge and luminous. She smiled at everyone, asking our names, chatting away. Simon was very friendly too, bounding him out, pulling fun funny faces and tweaking the nose of the very little boy who was the conjurer. I smiled shyly at Miranda and Simon, but I felt paralysed with fear. I didn't know what I was going to do. I knew how to make cookies, but what was I supposed to say when I was mixing and baking? I asked Jules in panic. It's okay. Miranda and Simon will ask you stuff, and you just say whatever you want. We're not going to go through it word by word just now. We find it may makes things much fresher when we start recording, said Jules. I had to stand in the kitchen and pretend to make cookies, while Miranda and Simon bobbed about. I felt so shy I barely said a word. Then a tall red-haired girl called Megan did an acrobatic dance. A tiny kid called Tina sang a song in a surprisingly deep strong voice. The little boy Darren did his conjuring tricks and then the blonde girl in the short skirt and high heels, Nancy Jo, sang and danced. She was depressingly good at it too. Then we'll come back to you beauty and we'll look at the cookies and you'll draw the bunny and then, well, We'll just uh, chat for a couple of minutes, and that's the end of the programme, said Jules. OK, let's take you back to your dressing room. I'll come and fetch you for makeup and a tick, Beauty. Should Beauty change into her best dress now? Mum asked. Well, we think Beauty looks great for the programme just the way she is, said Jules. Oh, yes, wear your jeans. I'm wearing mine, said Miranda. And we all love your red boots, said Simon. So much more sensible than some of the others, Jules muttered in my ear, raising an eyebrow at Nancy Jo. So... I didn't change after all. I think mum was a bit disappointed and worried people would think I looked a scruff in my jeans. Let's hope your dad doesn't get wind of this and watch. He'd go bananas, said mum. I wonder what they're going to do to you in makeup. I hope they don't plaster it onto you. The makeup lady was lovely. She just put a little foundation on me so I wouldn't look all shiny and the palest pink lipstick. And then she combed my hair and said my page boy style really suited me. There, you look fabulous, pet. Even though I say it myself, she said. I stared at myself in the mirror. I didn't look fabulous, but I looked kind of okay. I gave myself a soppy little grin and the girl in the mirror smiled back at me encouragingly. Then Jules came to collect me and we went back into the studio ready for the start of the show. They stood me in the kitchen with all the ingredients in front of me. I suddenly felt so sick and so scared. I wondered if I was going to throw up right there. And then in my mixing bowl. Are you okay, sweetheart? Said Simon, suddenly gentle. I'm scared. I know, I know, don't worry. Miranda and I get scared too before the start of the show, but it'll be fine once the cameras start rolling. But what about all those thousands of people who'll be watching us, I whispered. Forget about them. It's just you and me and Miranda and the other kids having fun, okay? Okay, I said, swallowing. That's the girl. Now listen, I want at least four of these famous cookies, okay? I'm a growing lad, he said, patting his big tummy. Then they started the countdown to the programme, and Simon whizzed over to the red sofa out beside Miranda. I heard the watchbox signature tune, and Simon and Miranda started singing it too. Hi everyone, said Miranda, smiling at the camera. Welcome to your watchbox, said Simon. We've got a great show for you today. You just wait and see. First of all, we're going to do some baking. Are you any good at cooking, Miranda? No, I'm total rubbish, but I know a girl who's a great cook, and that's Beauty Cookson, said Miranda. They both walked over to me. That was my cue to start mixing the flour and the sugar and the butter. I started to determine, started so determinedly that some of the flour flew up all over my t-shirt. I froze. Whoops, it's snowing, said Simon, flicking a tiny bit of flour too. Hey, hey, stop messing about, you two, said Miranda. Okay, beauty, tell us how to make your special bunny cookies. 
I hear they've become ever so popular where you live in Rabbit Cove. That's a lovely name. It's a lovely place. It's the seaside and it's so special, I said, suddenly not shy at all. My mum's great at making all sorts of cookies and I'm her number one helper. Now we specialise in making these bunny cookies with this special cutter. Simon held it up, making the bunny run up my arm and across my shoulders. It tickled and I couldn't help laughing. They've become really popular and we sell heaps, I said, still mixing. And you've designed the special bunny logo on the packaging, said Miranda, holding up one of our bags of cookies. You like rabbits, do you, Beauty? Yes, I love them, I said, slowly adding my eggs and milk to the cookie mixture. Can I have a stir, Beauty, said Simon. Have you got a favourite rabbit, then? Well, I said, hesitating. Come on, tell us, said Miranda, her head close to mine. I like Lily. She's Sam's rabbit on the Rabbit Hutch show, I said. I know I'm an awful baby to watch it, but I watch Sam and Lily. I love Lily too, said Simon. I love Sam, said Miranda. Well, we've got a little surprise for you at the end of the show, Beauty. But now, while you're rolling out your cookie dough and popping your cookies in the oven, let's meet some of the other guests. Megan is going to do a special acrobatic dance for us. And boy, is she bendy, said Simon. The cameras switched to Megan, who did a handstand and then arched over so her feet touched the floor. By the time she'd finished her display, I'd rolled out the dough, cut out 48 bunny cookies and put them in the oven. Simon looked over at me, did a thumbs up and rubbed his tummy. I peered into the darkness at the back of the studio and there was mum, waving wildly and blowing kisses at me. Tiny Tina came on and sang and then did a short duet with Miranda. Darren did his conjuring tri tricks and Simon joked around with him. You haven't got a top hat with you, have you, Darren? Then you could make a white rabbit appear for beauty, he said. How are those cookies getting on, beauty? They're starting to smell good. Another couple of minutes. That's all, I said, peeping in the oven. Simon helped Darren through a complicated card trick and a funny routine with a magic box. And then it was Nancy Joe's turn. I took my cookies out of the oven. Jules helping as the cameras weren't on us. We put them out on, a co on cooling trays. They looked wonderful, beauty. They looked wonderful, beauty. Well done, she whispered. Nancy Jo threw back her head and went for a high note, thrusting out her arms and tapping her high heels. She wobbled precariously. Jules shook her head and I had to bite my cheeks to stop myself giggling. Miranda and Simon had a chat with Nancy Jo and then she tottered off while I was gently shoved towards the red sofas, a plate of bunny cookies in either hand. Oh, wow, beauty. They look fantastic, said Miranda. May I have one? Of course, I said. They're for everyone. Though Simon has to have lots because he says he's a growing boy. They both laughed. They laughed as if it was my joke. Now, you've just got to, you're not just a good cook. You're also brilliant at drawing, beauty. Will you draw a bunny for us, said Simon, his mouth full of cookies. Mmm, these are delicious. I started drawing on the pad he gave me. While to my embarrassment, Miranda held up lots of my Sam and Lily pictures to the camera. I love the oil paintings, Beauty, she said. My special artist friend Mike showed me how to use oils, I said proudly. There, that's a lovely rabbit, said Simon, peering at my page. Now I've borrowed this magic wand from our friend Darren. If you tap your drawing, it might just turn into a real rabbit, Beauty. I stared at Simon. Go on, give it a try, he said. I tapped my drawing, feeling a bit daft. I sensed someone coming up behind me, and then suddenly, there in my lap, was a huge, soft, oh-so-familiar white rabbit with floppy ears. Lily, I said. Hey there, beauty, said Sam, coming to sit beside me. It was the real Sam, his shiny hair flopping over his forehead, his eyes bright, his face one big smile. I still wondered if I was dreaming, but Lily felt so warm and heavy, cuddled up on my lap, I knew I had to be wide awake. We're so pleased you like our show, beauty. Lily's particularly thrilled that she inspired your special cookies. They are so good, said Sam, biting one in half, and I love all your artwork. I drew them all for you, I whispered. I never dared send any because I was scared you'd think me a silly baby. Maybe you'd like to give Sam and Lily one of your paintings now, said Miranda. Oh yes, what about the oil painting of you and Lily? You, you're meant to be on holiday in Rabbit Cove, I said, shyly handing it to Sam. We'll have to go there someday. It looks just our sort of place, said Sam. We'll hang your picture in pride of place in the rabbit hutch, won't we, Lily? Lily snuffled sleepily, taking up an awful lot of my lap. Lily's almost as fat as me, said Simon, leaning over to stroke her. Yes, she's always been a big girl, but she's even bigger now, said Sam. I think she's got a sweetheart at rabbit school because our Lily's going to have baby bunnies soon. Oh, how wonderful, I said, stroking her too. Congratulations, Lily. I had a little nibble of a cookie myself, just to check they were okay. Tell you what, beauty, you've given us a very special present, so maybe we can give you one in return. Lily won't be able to keep all her babies. 
Would you like to have one of the baby rabbits? I choked on my cookie. <laughs> really? I spluttered. Yes, really, said Sam. Ah, said si Simon. Isn't that sweet? Time to go now, folks, said Miranda, waving. Simon and Miranda and Sam and Megan and Lucy and Darren and Nancy Joe all waved. I couldn't wave because Lily was fidgeting and I had to hang on to her. <laughs> so I gave a great grin to the camera. You were so great, beauty, said Miranda. You're a little natural, said Simon. A total little beauty. Well done, babes, mum shouted, but I hardly heard them. I stroked Lily and looked at Sam and he smiled especially at me. And that is the end of Cookie by Jacqueline Wilson. I really hope you enjoyed that story, guys. I will be back soon with lots more stories and videos coming my way very, very soon. If you'd like to subscribe or hit a like, that's always appreciated. Thanks for listening, guys. Take care. Bye bye.